Since we first looked up at the moon and stars, we must have asked questions about our place in the universe. So how did life begin on Earth? Is life common out there in the solar system and beyond? Are there other civilizations out there waiting to be discovered? And what would it be like to live on other planets? Well, in this video, we're going to meet the scientists who are using cutting edge research to try and answer those questions. It has been 50 years, only 50 years, since actually humans set foot on the moon. However, in the intervening 50 years, there have been quite a few key discoveries that have enabled us to even consider returning to the moon with an aim that actually we are going to stay there for much longer than a few days, perhaps weeks, maybe, maybe months at a time. In order to enable that, you need to be able to live off the land. About 20 years ago, there was a discovery of water ice on the lunar poles. That was a game changer because up until then, it was considered that the moon was bone dry. The water that is present on the moon as water ice may be directly accessible and usable as liquid water, but there is also water locked inside the lunar minerals. And perhaps the water is going to be the, the first resource that human beings are going to need not just for survival, but for actually uh, using the water to produce rocket fuel. Okay, so what we are looking at here is a machine that is called NanoSims. And what this machine does is it bombards the lunar sample with high energy ions. And those high energy ions then actually release the atoms and the ions that are present in the lunar sample. There is no free flowing liquid water in these samples. Instead, what we are interested in knowing is how much of hydrogen is present in these samples. And most of the time, this hydrogen is going to be present together with oxygen. And if you combine lots of these hydroxyl molecules, you could actually produce water as you know it. So the experience that a person would have of living on the moon perhaps could be seen as being similar to what astronauts experience when they are on international space station for extended periods of time. When they go on international space station, um, they are on their own. Uh, they have to fix things when they go wrong. If humans are going to Mars, they have to be able to survive with the resources they are taking, the harsh environment of space for up to two years. And that is not easy. And that is not trivial. But we can practice a lot of those things while we are at the moon. Living on the surface of the moon would have a number of challenges because the moon lacks an atmosphere, so it lacks air for us to breathe. So that's one of the challenges we would have to face, a way to enable us to breathe, perhaps living in a bubble. We could use the regolith which covers the moon's surface as a raw material to build a moon base. And one of the ways could be that uh, we could use microwave as an energy source to process this lunar regolith to, to prepare a feed stock that can then be used by 3D printers to actually print habitats or structures that could be components of a lunar habitat. Living on the moon would be really exciting because there'd be a lot of firsts involved with that. There'd be the first plant grown on the moon, the first prolonged walk on the moon. It would just be an exciting place to be and the sort of scientific uh, discoveries that could be made in this moon base would be, it'd be amazing to be part of. Humans are adventurers. Humans are explorers by nature. So if I had to go somewhere, I would simply go there because I like to go there, because I like to explore. It is important to be able to look after our planet because it is, it is unique in the solar system. It is the only body we know of to support liquid water and to support life right now. So it is important to look after it. But that shouldn't stop us from looking out and dreaming of exploring space. For the vast majority of the humanity, the Earth is still the cradle, but we can't always stay in the cradle. We have to go out and explore. Hello everyone. Living on the Moon is an exhibit that provides a very broad overview of all research activities that are taking place in the UK in the field 
of science and exploration of the moon. Our team members are drawn from five UK higher education institutions and they include students, researchers and academics at all career stages. In this exhibit, we try to share with you all the progress that we have made over the past 50 years in terms of our understanding of the moon and what moon tells us about the solar system and then develop a vision for the next 50 years where we see an extended presence of human beings at the moon is spurred by new scientific discoveries, new and innovative engineering solutions and the utilization of the local resources that are present at the lunar surface. And all of this is set to happen in the context of international partnerships. So let's take a look at some of the recent developments in this field since last year. The UK scientists are at the forefront of analyzing moon rocks in the laboratories. Their ongoing research on Apollo samples and lunar meteorites continue to reveal new insights into the formation and evolution of the moon. Not only that, it, these studies are also providing new information about processes that were involved in building of rocky planets such as our own Earth. Besides, our pioneering research on measuring water in lunar samples is guiding the development of instrumentation for landing at the surface of the moon and measuring water in the samples that would be drilled from the lunar subsurface. Another exciting development in this field has been the discovery of water at the lunar surface, especially at the polar locations in the permanently shaded craters. As a result of this, lunar exploration has been catapulted into limelight, especially because of the possibility of using this lunar water as rocket fuel or for other life support processes. Establishing the exact nature and quantity of this water will play a critical role in our quest to establish a, an extended human presence at the lunar surface, as well as in our preparation for exploring deeper into space with a goal of landing humans on Mars in not too distant future. UK researchers are also playing key roles in building new instrumentations that will be flown onto various orbiter and landed missions to the moon in the next few years with the aim of establishing the nature and distribution of water at the lunar surface as well as testing some key technologies for example trying to extract water from the lunar regolith or trying 3d printing for building components for a lunar habitat. This is an expanding area of research, commonly known as in-situ resource utilization or ISRU in short. More recently, both NASA and the European Space Agency have announced ambitious plans of exploring the moon and beyond in a sustainable manner through international partnerships. China is already making great strides in lunar exploration, with it being the only country that has successfully landed a spacecraft on the far side of the moon. And China is also on the verge of achieving a major technological feat by returning new lunar samples by the end of this year through its Chang'e 5 mission. Aside from these government agencies, Commercial providers are likely to play a key role in the future lunar exploration by providing key infrastructure and services in space and at the moon. The future of space exploration is surely bright with the next generation of explorers set to harness the limitless potential of humanity, enabling a sustainable human presence in space and on the moon, or in other words, making living on the moon a distinct possibility in not too distant future.